Hey you guys. So pretty much I am just getting back from a client. It is a full cutout and this is my first time like implementing an elevator um, in someone's home. I feel like whatever phase of life I'm in is how my clients are pretty much directed. So when I was doing like new construction with the builder, that's who was reaching out to me. Now that I'm like renovation mode, people with renovations are reaching out. So one, I'm super grateful and thank you. Secondly, over the past couple of days, I've been working on planning for the kitchen renovation, which I will share with you guys, and trying to get the bathroom done. There's only one thing left to do in the bathroom, but I will let you guys see that, and then towards the end, I'll talk about this. Oh, it just makes me so happy. Before we dive into today's video, I want to share with you a quick measuring tip when you're trying to obtain material for your home. You have to measure the overall width with the height and for this the width was two feet and the height was nine feet and you want to measure every single wall that's going to get tiled so you're going to multiply nine times two and that is how you're going to get the square footage of the amount of material that you're going to need you guys i did it perfectly i only had one piece of tile left over for both spaces all right you guys so my room is a little upside down once it's together, I'll give a little bit more explanation. I just moved my bachelor chest and console table away from the walls because my uncle is here and he's going to do the base trim because this is like a mess. Okay. Not only that, my computer essentially went out. I'm sure by now you guys have seen the update. And so he's going to come. I'm going to see if he can go ahead and add a piece because we got to run to Home Depot because my cousin's here too, which is his daughter. We're going to be doing some other stuff in the room. Okay, I'm going to see if I can get him to put a piece up before we run out because we got to run some errands because my cousin is here with me. She's going to help me to situate stuff because even though the house is coming together, there's still a lot that's not done. And I think... In about a month and a half, we're going to start the kitchen renovation. So I wanted you guys just to see. And let me just say, I'm really loving the trim. I know you guys, you know, some of y'all with it would not. But I will say, in terms of wall details, this is just really good. In the sconce lights, the whole black and gold in here, I really do love. Alright you guys, so I am going into super prep mode. Because the installers, they said to give them about five days for the countertops. So I'm just really trying to get everything ready. I'm probably going to have to screw some of the facing off the drawers to remove the plastic. Because it was a hard time trying to get some of it off. And then I also have to find some hardware. I really want to be done with the bathroom by the end of April. And I'm talking about like sanding, painting, the trim, like everything I would like for it to be done by the end of April. So my bedroom, I want it to be done. So that way when we get into the actual renovation of the kitchen, I'm not focusing on two areas. I'm just focusing on one and my room can stay clean. So I am pretty much prepping and cleaning the bathroom for the installers to come, even though I'm not sure of exactly what day they're coming. I have a cordless vacuum, but I cannot find it. I cannot find the battery for it. So I'm using this vacuum. I don't really care for it. The space is not big enough for this vacuum. It was really great in the previous house, but it is just entirely too big here. So I'm probably going to have to purchase another cordless vac, which I'm dreading. But um, overall, it's definitely doing the job. If you guys are interested, I will leave it for you. But personally, I don't feel like I need a vacuum that big for this particular house. I think a cordless vac is just fine. But again, I have been using it because there's just been a lot of renovation going on. And so I'm pretty much emptying it out. It really is a easy to use uh, vacuum. And I think it's under $100. It's quite useful. I just don't feel like for the space, like it's a little too bulky. And I don't even think I have a closet that's big enough to store it, honestly. Um, 
so technically speaking it was in the basement but I did get things cleaned out and I am moving towards the tub I have to say that I really like the fact that I have the um, corded handle it makes cleaning a little bit easier if you're wondering I just put some Dr. Brunner's I want to say that's the peppermint or the almond flavor that I'm pouring into the tub and I'm cleaning it. The brush that I'm using, I got it from Amazon. It's in the description box if you are interested. It comes with, I think, two or three interchangeable heads, which is what I like because I'm able to go around and clean. If I need to change, I just change it out. But for this one here, I leave it behind the tub once I'm done cleaning. I give it a good rinse up with um, hot water and then I put it in the back and you can't even see it. So when I'm ready to clean the tub, I go right in and I clean the tub. And this is like, honestly, this has been the most easiest and effective way to clean the tub in the towel surround. And for those that asked, there is tile around the window. Now, if you plan on doing window treatment, then I'll tell you the thing twice about doing that. But I knew that I wasn't going to do anything exactly what's on the windows was going to stay on there. But there is tile in the inter um, facing of the window trim. Okay, so you guys, I don't want to move my camera because there's a lot of moving parts. So we'll start off as just a quick, okay, we're going to go ahead, get the trim down, get this. My cousin now is like, let's just, I'm here today. Let's get what we can get done done. So we are not opening up boxes, but there's so much movement. I don't want my camera to break. I'm just going to have to give you guys an update towards the end. But the trim is pretty much getting done. I'll share that with you guys tomorrow. And I have to go out of town for a client. <sighs> Give me a minute. Good enough. Um, we're going to have to get a stroller. Nadia, look. I can't see you. Huge, huge thank you to Babe's niece. Because the installers called me when I was out of town, you guys. And he pretty much said that, that that particular day, I think it was a Wednesday, was the only free day he had. If I didn't get it done that Wednesday, I was going to have to wait another week. And so I called her and I'm like, is there any way you can make it to my house? Because the installers are coming. And I really want the countertop and the sink and everything to be installed. And she has been to a couple of job sites with me. So I knew it was something that she was going to be able to handle in terms of placement. And she was able to. And not only did she record for YouTube, but she also recorded content for Instagram. Oh, and she was wanting me to tell you if she could get the sink directly underneath the mirrors. Like centered directly underneath each mirror. Okay. So it's going to be up-centered from the cabinet. Is that okay? Um, no, I think she wants it centered from the... If it aligns... With the, mirror, with the mm -hmm. mirror, right? Yeah. Yeah. Center of the mirror. Yeah, because with the cabinet... Okay. No, 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 no,
whatever's been flowing through my mind, you guys are getting to see a fraction of it, okay? Because budget controls the outcome. But for the most part, the guys did a really, really great job of number one, installing the countertop. Number two, making sure that the vanity was centered and aligned with the mirror. Your heart, keep it in your pocket for safekeeping. Don't ever let nobody be the reason. You throw it out, you stop caring about it. Don't let your head get in the way. Can't be defined by your mistakes. You know you try and you try really hard. Now, about a month ago, I shared with you that the hardware in the sink is from the brand Vigo. I will be placing them in the description box. That way you guys have access. Let me just say, this is this collaboration has made me aware of the brand. And when I first seen it, I was like, I don't know how I feel about it. But I can tell you guys now, I'm really, really loving it. I actually have two clients that I'm working with in their bathroom and they have asked to use it. They're not using the same exact material that I'm using in my space, but we're going with Figos. And I, I really can't say anything negative about it overall. Like installation, the look, the finish, the ease of everything was just perfect. I know some of you are used to doing like an undermount. And even for me, my last house was an undermount, but I think the sleekness of having the vessels right on top of the quartz with the mirror kind of gives the vanity area a more modern look and it doesn't look so traditional or contemporary. And that's really what I was going for at this rate. It's really gelling uh, two design minds together to create a cohesive look. And so I feel like I got my way with the vanity. They're dark, they're pretty in, in terms of storage. But in order to kind of bring down the darkness and the masculine look of it, the top just did that, you guys. And I think it just works so perfectly. So there's definitely ways of being able to incorporate two personalities into a space. You just have to really do it right. And I'm not saying I did it right. I'm just saying I did it to my own comfortable level of appeasement. And I really, really enjoy it. So, yeah. But sometimes you fall. You sometimes you fall.
this is pretty much the end of the installation. They had penciled a lot of the marking on to the cords. And so the guy is pretty much cleaning everything off. He's wiping because they made all the cuts for the plumber. And then he went around and caulked and made sure everything was in place. And I think Saturday, the plumber came out and he did the plumbing for the hardware. So just to be clear, if you are wondering, they do install the countertop. That is one fee. And then I have to call the plumber to install the sink and also the hardware. So with this install, there is two separate fees that are with this. I just want to make myself clear. So when you're considering doing your bathroom renovations, you put all those fees into play because everyone has a job and then there's a fee that comes with everyone that does a specific job. And I find that this works so much better than getting a general contractor to do everything and things just don't turn out right. So with this bathroom renovation, I hired someone to install the cabinets. I hired someone to do the mirrors. I hired a separate person to do the countertop. And I hired a separate plumber. And I hired a separate towel person. That way I ensure that everyone was in their level of expertise and specialty to ensure that we were not going to lose or waste any money with the renovation. That is always the goal. I don't want to pay for no mistakes that I did not do. I do that enough within my business that I don't want to do it in my personal life. <laughs> so I have to say, we did not double or overpay for anything that we've done so far within our house. So again, if I can do it personally, and it is positive, I can do it professionally. I really hope that you guys enjoyed the video. Um, it's what I do, you know what I'm saying? And I'm only saying it's what I do because sometimes I really had to remind myself Sometimes I really have to remind myself to record. Record, Nadia. Because I do so much. And I don't really think the things that I do are like important or embedded in me. I feel like you guys want to see the end result. But unfortunately, I have to move at my own pace. And so things are just not getting done like this. You know, so we have to make sure that we balance out our everyday lives, the kids and all of that before we jump into projects. I want to share this tray with you guys, so I'm going to do a quick little unboxing of it, and then we'll get into it. You guys, I placed an order. I hope it turns out good for the sake of me being happy. Well, I can tell it already fit because it's, it's there. I wanted a tray up here. Something pretty, not a regular bathroom tray. Y'all, it's so heavy. Oh my God, my hands look. Ugh. Oh my gosh. Woo, wee. Woo. Oh. So. Woo, she's sassy. You guys, Gorgeous. It's heavy. The quality is impeccable. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. Ah! I'm so oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. Okay. You guys. So I made a very small order. I have the La Perla uh body scrub and i have the la perla oil <laughs> i wanted pink but i didn't want it to be too crazy i've got my donna karen uh deodorant and i have the nest hand wash and because you have to have a fragrance this is my second bottle, but I also grabbed 
Casopita. You guys, it looks so good. It looks so good. Let me grab babes for a quick. Okay, so I'm extremely biased. I wanted colors that would match the bathroom. So this is here. Harmonist. Well, Harmonist going to sit here like that. And then this is the Blanche Bette. Oh my gosh, it looks so good. You guys, I love it. I feel like at some point, um, I'll do a whole tour of the bathroom and let you guys see like the whole thing. Cause trim just went down, which now it's done. Um, I know you guys didn't see it in the video, but I haven't gotten an opportunity to fix things back into my room because I was out of town. And so I have to kind of put everything back. Um, number two, all of the hardware and everything is in here now. So I feel really good about that. The only thing that's missing is a shower door and the towel warmer, which I have to return the one that we currently have in order for me to be able to do that. But what I really want to talk to you guys about, and I really hope that it comes across on camera, and if it doesn't, I'm probably going to zoom it. I'm looking at it now, and it looks like it's showing really well. Um, something to highly, highly consider when it comes to like accessorizing and the hardware and all of that, I really think about it the same way you do stack jewelry, and you can do like some white gold with rose gold. But the actual finish of the gold matters. And when people reach out to me and they ask a certain question, I feel like, like that's the number one thing is understanding the sheen. Now, granted, I'll take full accountability. I know that some of my accessories tend to be a little bit higher. But overall, I just feel like it's better quality and it lasts me longer and my kids can't break it. So for me, when I'm thinking about purchasing things for my house, I'm more so thinking about the kids not breaking it. But if you are going into these other stores and you're purchasing accessories, I will say be on the lookout for the gold. Um, example, stay away from the gold that you know is going to like turn your neck and turn your finger. It may not essentially be turning green in terms of hardware in your bathroom, but the ick that it gives when you walk into a space, unless you just like that. But the essentially, essentially the green would be the ick of what it does into a space. And it's just harsh. It's a very hard gold. And once you add that gold into your house, and I'm sure you guys know what gold I'm talking about, it just makes everything kind of cheap enough. That's just my personal opinion. But again, if you like it, by all means do it. But for the people that reach out to me about mixing your blacks, your whites, and your silver. You just need to make sure, like I would never put chrome with these two. You can do silver, but you'll probably have to do um, like a pewter silver, not chrome. Would go really nicely. It's no different than if I was to stack silver and gold bangles in black. Like, it's okay. But if you go and you get that real yellow heavy gold, and then you're trying to match it with chrome, and you're trying to do black, to me personally, I do feel like it's a lot and it becomes like an overkill. So I would tell you if you're spray painting, if you're shopping sales, try to just find a gold that has a really nice, soft, clean finish, almost looks like a piece of jewelry. So that way when you start trying to match it with other colors, then you can match it. And the, the other thing that I have to do is I'm gonna add another light right here, which I think with the light being in the middle, right here and it is gold and then this right here coming on it is going to add the perfect amount of jewelry that I need for this bathroom and so always look at your light fixtures and you know the accessories in your bathroom that's like the jewelry so you know you have your earrings your bangles your necklace your belt and you just always want everything and honestly, you just always want everything to complement and you don't want one thing to make more of a statement than the other. At least that's what we should do. 